Hey guys, just Janny. Today I wanted to show you how I made my fork ring. You're going to need a fork with long tines. And what I mean by that is the regular dinner fork is just over an inch and a half. And the ones with long tines, that's just over two inches. Even, you can see this one's shorter on this end. Even the short one is still two inches. So for this project, find a fork with long tines. I'm going to be using my bail making pliers to make these curls here. The size I have is four and five millimeters, so the small side is four and the large side is five. And that's what size I used for this particular ring. They do make several sizes of bail making pliers. That's a really big fat one there. It will work, but they're going to be really big curls. So you won't get a, such a tight look. So again, four and five millimeter bail making pliers. So we don't need to flatten out our fork because this curve, we're going to be bending it into a ring. So we'll let that curve stay there. We're going to start by putting this in our vise and annealing it. Okay, I have my fork in my vise with the pattern facing away from me. So I'm working on the back side. I'm going to anneal it just to get the tines to bend a little easier. If you're new to annealing and you don't know how long, just grab a Sharpie, any color, put a mark on it. When that Sharpie disappears, you're done. So I'm using just kind of a soft flame. Move it all over. And my mark is gone. I'm done. I'm ready to twist my tines. Okay, remember this is hot. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a stainless steel straw or anything you have that will fit over your fork tine. And I'm going to bend the outside tines out a little because I need room to make that curl inside. So if I bend it over a little, I have room to work. That's probably good. So the first curl, move this ring around here. You can see so the outside tines are the ones in the back and the inside tines cross over and stay in front. So if you have bail making pliers, I'm putting the small end on the inside so that this curl is small. I'm just going to go until that touches. If it's a little wonky, go ahead and straighten it out. Do the same thing on the other side. 
I try to keep my hand out of the way of the camera. And they should be relatively the same height. Now we're going to oh, bend these down. So we have the small curl here. Now we're going to do the larger curl. Now we want our small one to land at the bottom. So that means that this loop we want to land here. So we have to bend it about halfway. So I got to figure out, you know, about where is halfway on my pliers. And I'm using my sharp here to show you. Uh, if I put my big side there, I'm, I want to make these the same. So I want it the same on both sides, right? So just an easy way to do that is figure out one side and then come over and put a mark so you know about where to put your pliers on the other side. They don't have to be identical, but similar. So put your small side back in, put your large side by your mark if you made one, and slowly bend it over. And I say slowly because if you're working with a really old piece like I am, it can break off. And don't be upset if it does break off because some of these are just so old, they're, they're a little brittle. What I'm doing there is I was kind of bending off backwards so I was just straightening it out. Otherwise my curl would be way back here. And I want it to come and touch. So just keep going until it touches. I'm trying to work on the back side so you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to have to switch here. My pliers are getting in, uh, hitting on the back. And we have help. This is Chica. Come on, Chica. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. Put your small tip in, put your large tip against the mark. Oops, got mine in too far. Come on. Well, I must have marked them different because that's as wide as my pliers are going to go. So that's what I'm going to work with. Okay, start bending it over. Now mine, again, like last time, it's kind of going towards the back. Get out of the way, sick. So I'm just gonna pull this forward a little while I'm halfway. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it through the front so that I can reach easier and bring it all the way to touching. It's not going to stay touching. That's okay. We're just bringing it up that close. And again, mine's turned toward the back. We'll bring it forward a little. Okay. Next step, remove the cat again. Um, so now we're going to bend the middle. First, pull them towards you. And that is just to kind of get them out of the way because these two are going to 
come together in the back and these two are going to cross over in the front so it's easier to bend them out of the way now also apart we're going to do the exact same curls for the middle so we'll need that space to curl in so let's do it again small tip goes on the inside Not quite. Be a little bit bigger there. They should be about the same height. Those look okay. We're going to do the same thing as last time, except you can see on here, you can see this small loop. When we did it on the outside, we brought it almost to the bottom. On the middle set, we're going to bring our small loop only about three quarters of the way down because we need that space here to cross them over. So let's see, where's my Sharpie? So instead of bringing it halfway between the loop and the bottom, we only want our curl to come about three quarters of the way. So halfway between this curl and my finger, uh, maybe about there, close enough. I mean, they, they don't have to all turn out exactly the same. Sorry, not left-handed. Um, so, just so they turn out similar, I'm going to put a mark on the other side. Actually, I think that's lower than the other. Okay, we're just going to keep going here. You can see this part, which is this part here, is going to be parallel to your vise. So just keep uh, working them over until they, they are parallel. Don't worry if you get some little scratches and dings. We can file those and get them out of there. Mm, that might need to come over just a smidge more. Oops. That looks pretty good, so let's get this one over. I need to move to this side, so I have to get my hands in front of the camera. What I'm going to do is, these are going to come together in the back, and they're going to get bent around to make the ring shape. So I'm going to go ahead and bend this one forward a little and get it out of my way. There is no uh, perfect or uh, tried and true way. It's just whatever works for you. So you can see 
You know, this tine's kind of wanting to fight me a little more. But just keep at it. Take your time. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I've run out of room to get leverage to get that all the way down and parallel. Straighten that up. So I'm going to hammer this down. I think that's pretty okay for now. Let's uh, let's go ahead and put pull the back two together, and we can do a little tweaking if we need to. So put your big side back in your big curl, and these two, if you can see there, they're just going to touch in the middle. You see that? So we're just going to bend it over so that this is in the middle so you can use this space to kind of see how far you need to go. And do you see when I did that, it pulled this open right here? That is perfectly normal. It's going to happen. Just bend that back a little. All of this just is kind of requires tweaking. Now, if you remember, I bent that forward to get it out of my way for this. Now I need to kind of bend it again to, oops, I'm doing that wrong. Okay, big one over here in the loop, small one over here between the tines. So we can bring it over to just touching in the middle. I'm just going to use these pliers that have the plastic coating, just kind of pinching them together. You can see I've kind of twisted my, my fork a little bit, but that's okay. It's going to get bent around into the ring shape and it'll be fine. Um, as you can see, they're not even. This one's further back than this one. This one's maybe not as down as far. If you need to do any other tweaking, go ahead. I think this will be okay for now and next step will be to cut off the excess and we're going to bend it around into the shape of a ring and then we can do any tweaking and filing and then we'll clean it up and see how it turned out. Okay, real quick to help you decide where to cut off your handle to make this ring. Mine is about a five and three quarter, so pretty small. So to help you out on yours, because you probably want it a little bigger, um, if you have this contenti chart, which Honestly, I rarely use this, but if it helps you out, the inside circumference of this ring is 50 millimeters. So they're saying 50.3 is a five and a half. Mine measures just a, a smidgen bigger than that. And what that means is if I take my cloth tape and I measure around the outside, it is three inches. 
So if you were to put your fork down and mark it from the very tips here, get all your curves in three inches, that should get you about a five and three quarter inch ring. Obviously we can't make it uh, perfectly that size because maybe these tines are bent in a little more or they're left out a little longer. So they're, they're different every time you make one. So um, just as a uh, helper, three inches is going to be just about a five and a half. So if you want yours bigger than that, then measure it longer because you can always, um, if it's going to be too big, you can always cut it off and grind it and bend it a little smaller. It's just, you can't go bigger. So start, start a little bigger if you're not sure and you can always kind of trim it back if you have to. So since I already have one that's a five and a half, I'm going to go ahead and make mine a little bit bigger this time, just to see what I get. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and measure mine and cut it and show you what I end up with when it's all bent into a ring. So I said three. Um, I think I'm going to mark mine at three and a quarter just to see what I get. So next um, I'm going to grab my mini bolt cutters. I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to take this over. I'm going to grind that smooth and then I'll put it through my ring bender and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, to finish this up, I'm going to use my bender press to shape it into a ring. I wanted to show you first from this angle, you can see that this isn't perfect and the reason I don't try to perfect it here is because as you bend it, these are going to have to get bent around and they might need a little tweaking. So it's okay if they're sticking up off each other and they're not just right. <clears throat> I am using my bender press. So if you have one, I'm using the one with the silver on the bottom. So we'll just get started, just like you would any other ring. Uh, you just are going to have to be a little more careful as you go over these, because normally we press, you know, kind of hard, but we don't want to just absolutely mash our tines. I think this channel's bigger. Yeah, th this one has a much wider channel. So I think I'm gonna work with that one first just so that I have a little more room for these tines to get started.
So the outside tines are the ones in the back. The inside tines get crossed over and are in front. Did I just have my hand in front of that? Probably. Oh, you're kidding me. Giddy giddy. Get out of the wrapping paper. Oh my goodness, could I have any more help today? Come on. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Come on. I swear to God, if I drop that thing again.